welkom bij de Arcade Saga. Mijn naam is Ilkjan Wiesma. En today I think I have a very special video. Personally, I'm very, very interested in this one. I like make, to make all my videos, but this one is, uh, like I said, very special. So let me explain. Well, first of all, it happened, uh, it, this ball started rolling because of a comment that I did get at my last, one of my last videos. That was the update on the Leodoro. I did get a, and I have my notes because I need to remember a lot. <laughs> I did get a note, uh, a comment from Tom Firmby88. And well, first of all, it turns out that Tom is growing in the, exactly the same setup as I do. So that was a first. I didn't hear that before. Only from viewers that saw my videos and started to use this, uh, this setup as well. But Tom is uh, experienced uh, in this setup for four years. Uh, I'm about the same time. I think it's four or five years, something like that. So that's uh, quite funny. Uh, but anyhow, we did have the same problems because Tom is obviously also not flushing. And I did explain in other videos that uh, if you don't flush in self-watering setup, uh, you will end up with a too low pH. So you might think the inorganic media does raise, raise uh, pH. That is true, but at a certain time, five or six months, like we saw in the Leodoro video, it's actually a good one to, if you want to know more about the system, we saw that the pH was dropping. Uh, that happens because we don't flush and there are certain stuff that stays in the reservoir because we don't flush. So I thought most of the times, uh, maybe bacteria, something like that. Root rot is a cause of a, a lower pH. But it also happened with arcs that do very well, have big root systems, do not have root rot, and still I had the drop inside of the system, basically. So Tom explained, it's, it's a very good comment, and I will have it in the screen by now, so you can uh, read it, and you, uh, if it, uh, you can pause the video or go back to the uh, Leodor update. But basically what Tom said is that the nitric nitrogen uh, does lower the pH. And because we do use uh, a fertilizer, and in my case I do lower uh, with less parts per million than he does. But over time we have a sort of buildup of that nitric nitrogen in our reservoirs. Which does make sense for me because I keep using that fertilizer. And that nitric nitrogen in my case is in the rain mix. It's very good fertilizer, but like I said, it does lower that pH. So over time, you automatically will have a uh, lower pH because that nitric stays in there. The plants do not take all of it, and it's it's a sort of small buildup. It will not give me any uh, salt buildup on the top of the pot, but still there's something happening in there. So Tim, Tom had the same uh, experience. Maybe you saw it in a comment, but Tom did get uh, advice directly from Mr. Roy Takanada, which is a, if you ask me, a very, very famous orchid grower, uh, has a, a lot of experience with orchids. If you don't know the person, but you have heard of his name, that is basically, I think, because he ha has his own crosses, which is very famous, and that's the Dendrobium Roy Takanada, which almost, uh, which also reminds me of a video of Orchids in Paradise, if I'm saying it good, from Hawaii, Aloha. And she is also uh, watching my videos, but she has a lecture of Roy Takanada. And definitely check it out, because personally I could listen uh, to that man for hours, because he's so experienced. But that's a little side note there, but uh, yeah, there's a nice lecture on uh, Roy Takanada. Anyhow. Tom did get uh, advice from Roy, Mr. Roy Takanada, that he probably needs another fertilizer uh, combined with, he, uh, I believe uh, Tom uh, uses always also the rain mix, but some, uh, a type of fertilizer, and I did a bias, is called Argifit. And Argifit has also nitrogen in it, but it has a different type of nitrogen in it, are more uh, mostly urea nitrogen and there are different stories about nitrogen and i'm not going to uh, into it too too with too much detail because that's not really the video um, we are uh, making today this a uh, new project actually but i'm going to uh, talk about it more but i am very interested in it 
as uh, Tom was in the effects on pH that the Argifit has. And that's because of, uh, like I said, the urea uh, nitrogen, because that uh, nitrogen type does uh, let the pH raise. And it does it four times stronger, and I had it put it here, we will have a close up uh, later on, but it does it four times stronger than the nitric nitrogen, does lower the pH. And yeah, I know it's, it's uh, I'm not going to uh, go into this too much with too much details because I'm not good at it, but I try to keep it as simple as, uh, as I can to, to start to understand what uh, is happening here, because this might be actually a uh, piece of puzzle that I was missing. But anyhow, so we have something in a fertilizer that does the raise, uh, does let the pH raise and uh, something that does lower it. So, if there is some way to find a balance between the two, we should get a fairly stable pH inside of the pot. And that was the advice from Roy Takanada uh, to Tom Furby. And Tom Furby was kind enough to share this information with me and with all of us. It's in a the comment there and I'm making a video about it, but this is absolutely perfect. Um, and it's, I just have a good feeling about it. That's how I am. If something feels right, I want to try it. And this is definitely something I want to try because what I did, as you probably know, is I used my, um, calcium magnesium powder and I put it in the pots, in the reservoirs every six months, something like that to let the pH raise. So basically, uh, what, uh, what happened is it's only happening one time. So over time the pH goes down again because I keep fertilizing my orchids with the nitric nitrogen, which like we just discussed, does lower the pH. So at a certain point of time, this is getting too weak or did get absorbed by the plants and the nitrogen takes over and lets that pH drop. But of course, we are never sure when that happens. So I always keep checking my orchids. And to be honest, if I can find something uh, like Tom, uh, let me know, um, that balance, give a balance inside of that reservoir about 6.5. He, he think it stabilizes around 6.5, according to Roy. Uh, that would be amazing, of course, because if I use this stuff, I'm going up to seven or e even to eight uh, uh, pH wise. So that's quite high. But yeah, finding something that doesn't uh, uh, need this anymore, me checking the pots constantly, yeah, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. And because Tom and uh, Mr. Roy Takanada are such experienced growers, giving me this advice, well, actually Tom does that, um, I just take it because I know there's something there. It may, of course, environment, uh, how you grow, how you work with your plants as a grower, as a person, has always has always its influence influences on uh, things that happening of course I know that but this should give me some results and like Tom explains as well in his uh, comment is that it takes some time so over the uh, next few months I should see a uh, stabilized pH so that's that's why I thought you guys. This is going to be a new project because I can imagine that a lot of you growers uh, will be interested in this as well. Or maybe like to watch it even you grow in a different setup. It may be uh, from interest uh, for you guys as well. I hope so. But I'm going to, uh, going to make this, uh, like I said, a new project. I, I am really looking forward to start this one. So I'm going to give a close up on my uh, whiteboard so we can go over the details. Uh, because we have some work to do. So we now see close up my uh, whiteboard and I did uh, write a, a few things down we just discussed. I apologize for the glare over here. I did try different setups but I have the grow lights on of course so I will have a bit of glare. I hope it's not too annoying. I apologize. But anyhow so we have the nitric nitrogen we just discussed which is lowering the pH. I hope you can see that. Ammonium uh, nitrogen 
we have and the urea nitrogen and i believe there are even more nitrogens but once again i'm not going into detail uh, about this because it's uh, it's a, a complete different story but the urea nitrogen does uh, let the rise the ph a ph plus and that's a ph minus so i'm going to leave this one as it is i'm not very interested in in it now so we're going to talk about the fertilizers but not to get it inside of the plants we purely are focused on the ph and what those two will do in the end of uh, this journey <laughs> something like that which is also very important to say is that the urea is four times stronger than the nitrogen so the nitrogen lowers the ph but the urea does rise the ph four times stronger so that's something to keep in mind because that explains the measurements that Tom suggested to me and um, I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit to the this side so we have a little bit more room Tom is using in, in screen yes uh, two grams of uh, rain mix I believe and uh, one milliliter of the Archie fit. I will uh, show you the, the new fertilizer in a minute. So this is uh, what, high, uh, what he is feeding, but it's fairly high. Uh, he said so. He said I'm suggesting in your case to use one gram of rain uh, mix and 0 0.5 milliliters of Archie fit, and this all goes into 10 liters of water in my case it's RO water yes that's still in screen so that's 10 liters of uh, water and then you have a sort of uh, ratio so two parts to one part so this is the rain mix and the okay, fit. it's something like this fairly close to this um, so that's fine so i need to measure in a second one gram of a rain mix let me quickly show you guys the rain mix this is the rain mix this is the fertilizer i always use so that's uh, i need one gram of that and i need 0 0.5 milliliters of the archifit here it comes this is how it looks like and this is liquid and the other one is a powder stuff so what i want to do with you guys is start measuring the amount of parts per million and we're going to do the same with the archifit parts per million because if i know how much part per million 0 0.5 milliliter is uh, you know, on 10 liters of water it doesn't matter how much water I then have I always need to aim for that amount of parts per million I hope this does make sense so if I want to mix up 40 liters of water I know I need that parts that reading of parts per million in there so obviously I need more of the aquafit and I'm going to slowly build it up until I reach this amount of parts per million which we know in a, in a, in a minute or two <laughs> same goes for the uh, one gram of rain mix i need to know how much parts per million that is on 10 liters of water and then i have my measurements and i can uh, mix up water as much as is that as i uh, like as i want as long as i have the amount of parts per million that is coming to stand over it here <laughs> because that is what tom suggested i should do so that's uh that's very very curious of course to see how uh how much that is so that's uh what we're going to do okay. now okay you guys it's a bit of a different setup but uh i'm here at my ring uh, barrel which i use uh, for to collect some uh, oro water well actually some it can hold up to i believe 240 liters of water but it saves me some time as you can imagine so it gets to room temperature it's always ready to go for me if i want to water my orchids like i will do today anyhow i need 10 liters of water i put the liters of water in here and i have my measurements over here so let's do that first 
and then we take it from there. So I'm going to make a little bit of noise because of the pump that's in there. So, so yeah, let's speed it up a little bit, otherwise it takes a bit too much uh, uh, time, of course. This holds three liters of water, so three times three liters, and the last one was one liter. So then we have obviously 10 liters of water. I'm going to stir it a little bit just in case, and because I always have a little bit of an uh, parts per million reading, there's always something left in there, which is okay. <coughs> I'm sorry, it, which is okay. <laughs> So we're going to start at zero and let's see what uh, type of reading we get. I'm going to put it on hold so we can see it. Oh, that was the wrong button again. That happens always. <laughs> so we're starting at five. I have a reading of five parts per million. I'm going to write it down. Let's do it on the whiteboard. It's a little bit easier. You cannot see it, but you will see it in a minute again. Or oh, water. There we go. Now we need to see if we can measure one gram of rain mix. So I'm going to put adjust my camera a little bit. So I hope you can all can see this. We have still have a little bit of glare on here. I apologize. I tried my best, but this is the best I can do now. Once again, because of the lights. But I put already a cup here to measure and we, this cup uh, weighs 13 grams. So 13 and we need to go to 14. Then we have one gram of fertilizer in there. So let's uh, try and do that. Here we go with the rain mix. And that was already, no, it's 13. Fifteen. That's a little bit uh, too much. Now it says 14, but uh, make up your mind, please. That's a teeny tiny amount, as we can see. Very teeny, it's just on the bottom. We have a little bit of fertilizer left. So let me uh, try it like this. So yeah, there's just a little bit of fertilizer. It's really just a little bit. I said that already, I apologize. <laughs> So I'm going to put it in water and then we can measure it. So we uh, can see what one gram will do with the parts per million basically. So let's do that. Okay, here's the water. I'm just gonna put in the whole thing, otherwise I can barely take it out. Just sort of wash it out. There we go. And let's have a look, let's me scoop, here we go. Stir this a little bit. <laughs> Here we go again. Let me see. Start it. Zero. So let's have a look. 30 parts per million. Yes. Tom, you did a very good job because you know obviously that I am a uh, weekly, weekly feeder. And then you get 30 parts per million which is perfect for my system. It's actually 25, of course, because we started with five parts per million. I'm going to write it down. So we're now at uh, 30, no, 25, I'm sorry. I'm going to put it here. We're going to visit the whiteboard in a second again, of course. So I'm going to shut it down for the moment. And now, the new fertilizer, and you know what, actually, which is gr great, I'm sorry. Um, this contains also vitamins. And I always thought about vitamins to add them in, and I didn't do it. But this fertilizer has a lot of beautiful stuff in it. And one more time, it's the Archie Fit. So here we go. I'm going to shake it a little bit. And then I need to collect five milliliters of this stuff. Just a teeny tiny little bit, because <laughs> I'm a weak feeder. <laughs> so, and here 
we go. We opened the bottle. Let me, and it just did shake it. Let me collect a little bit of fertilizer. Oops, here we are. Oh, there's a little bit of air pockets in there. Let me try to get rid of those. Yeah, here we do it. So it's uh, upside down, but still, I hope you can see if my camera wants to focus that this oh that's <laughs> that's four i'm sorry i couldn't see as screen is on the other side of the camera uh yeah this is five there we go see five milliliters of fertilizer and we're going to drop it in the water There we go. First, the lid back on. It's a little bit smelly. It's not not the end of the world, but still, it has a bit of smell to it. Stir this very well. There we go. I think that should be enough. And uh, let me grab my parts per millimeter. We start at uh, zero again. And let's have a look. And it settles at... Thirty-two. Oops. We are 32, so it adds a little bit of parts per million. That's not not that much. 32. Let me put it like this. But that's okay because we first we needed a start of a measurement. So I'm going to uh, turn the camera around and we will have a look at our measurements, and we're going to take it from there. But before we go to uh, the whiteboard, I of course want to know the pH of the water. How can I forget? Well, I almost forgot. Let's check that uh, very quickly because that's very important as well. This whole video is about pH. <laughs> First, uh, the part is a uh, sort of side effect, just to know what I uh, need to do. So yeah, my pH meter needs a little bit of time to settle. Goes up. It's around, yeah, 6.2. So it goes down a little bit when I, I did shake it a little bit, but this is, uh, it says 6.16. So for me, that's, uh, that's around 6.2. It's a little bit lower, but nonetheless, a beautiful pH reading. I definitely could live with that. Absolutely. So that's what we needed to know. Now we are going back to the whiteboard. <laughs> and there we are. So here we are. This is just what happened. We started with our O water that had a reading of five, par uh, five parts per million. We added the uh, one gram of rain mix. Am I in screen? Yes, one gram of rain mix. That lead to 30 parts per million and uh, 0.5 milliliters of the Archi fit led to 32 parts per million. So 32 is what we have now, but the five is what was in the water already. So we are basically with these two fertilizers. Let me do it like this. We have 27 parts per million added, added into our 10 liters of water. And this is beautiful because now I know how I, uh, what I need to aim for if I'm going to fertilize. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Go up. So I now can put it in here. One gram of uh, our uh, remix is 25 parts per million and 0 0.5 to 
two parts per million. Yeah, there we are. I'm sorry, I needed to check because I. But yeah, that's uh, that's right because we uh, did uh, have a total of 27. So let me put it here. You see, you guys, this is not something I uh, <laughs> I'm good at, but I think we are getting there. So 27 parts per million. Whoops, per million <laughs> is the total. So two parts here and 25 there. So it doesn't matter how much is in the water. If I had our own water that started at 10 parts per million, I still need this reading to add in. So then I would aim for 35 parts per million. I hope that makes sense. And I hope I'm doing this right. I think I'm doing this right. For me, it's, uh, it still makes uh, logic, but that can go over quickly. <laughs> I know myself. Anyhow, um, this is uh, for a, a winter feeding what I would like. It's fairly low, but I still could add some uh, calcium magnesium in or something. Tom added one, one more time that I said it earlier, but uh, he said you can add different stuff as well. Of course it has its influence, but if you don't overdo it, it should be getting uh, giving you the same results in the end. And that is a sort of uh, stabilized uh, pH reading. And uh, according to him, if I am correct, it should be stabilized at a 6.5 pH over time. So I can add a little bit more. Like I said, this is for winter, but in summer I like to uh, fertilize more. So I will uh, double the amount. So I'm going to 50 parts per million rain mix and four parts per million of the Archifit added in there as I have my results here. So that is this part. So for me, this feels like this is going to be part two of this video because I want to do some measurements. I want to try to get a few of what is going to happen this coming months. And actually I'm going to uh, plan for one year and that sounds very long, but uh, in the end, it's uh, if I'm going to follow my new notes, it's only four videos. So four uh, checkups to see what happens because I'm going to check them every three months. So today we're going to fill in this list and then uh, after three months, this one, then this one, and then this one. And then we can compare and see if we can uh, detect a balance with these arcs that I did collect for uh, this uh, project. And I'm going to start with this beautiful Her Alexander, Miltoniopsis. And um, I'm going to measure that. Then I'm going to measure all the other orchids here uh, on this list. There are 15 in total. To I thought 15 may give us a, quite a vision on what is going on in the pots. I hope so. Uh, I, 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 of course, I cannot check all of them. But what I did, I did uh, get different genres of orchids just to see and uh, just to uh, have it uh, l nicely mixed up, I think. So today I'm going to choose uh, to uh, check this one, the reservoir uh, uh, from the Miltoniopsis uh, with you guys. And then I'm going to uh, check the other ones, like I said, and then we're going to discuss and to see what, what happened there. But like I said, I'm not going to film everything. So let's uh, get this going. And yeah, I made my own The Orchid Saga PH project list <laughs> so it's a uh, very nice to uh, follow on of course uh, how are we gonna do this like this I'm in frame let's take her out and I did a video on her where I did split it up and we did a, a repot but she's beautiful in bloom and yeah I'm going to show you this bloom this bloom is misformed of deformed I'm sorry it's this one it's a bit deformed, as you can see, we missed uh, that, that lip. So that's before I started to use this arc fertilizer, just in case it happens again. <laughs> People say, you did uh, get misformed blooms. Well, sadly, one of them is uh, already a little bit different, but the rest is uh, looking beautiful. So I think it's okay. I'm not sure what's happening there. But anyhow, let's uh, see uh, for the pH, the pH meter. I put it in first. So it can settle a bit and then I'm going to look for uh, the parts per million in. Uh, meanwhile, 
let me hold that. This is 103. I'm not sure where I'm left because my battery died, but uh, luckily I had it still in screen. So that is that. I did take note of that. Now we need to look at the pH and that's uh, fairly low. It's still, still work. Sometimes the pH meters do, do take fairly long. It's a little bit annoying. Yeah, I think it's settling. Yeah. It's in the five, but it's just enough. It's about six pH. Let me, here we are. So five, no, nine, nine. So I'm going to write it down. So that's uh, fairly low, but it's a good, uh, good one to follow on. Nine, nine. So what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to check the, all the other ones and then I'm going to introduce to you guys which orchids I did choose plus their measurements. So we uh, shorten that up a little bit. So I'm going to have to do some work, but uh, then I will be back. <laughs> well, I just finished uh, doing the measurements. So I'm going to film the orchids that I selected for uh, for this project. But before I do, I just wanted to give you a close up of that misformed bloom or misshaped so we know it's not because of the fertilizer because it already had it but anyhow let's go uh, to the first one and see is living up here it's a odontoglossum bilara type probably uh, renamed it but anyhow <laughs> i don't have a uh, id for it but it's about uh, to start uh, to bloom and this one is doing very well so i took that one uh, for this project as well then over here i choose this oncidium type these beautiful new roots it's the munsterland stern oncidium oh and by the way i uh, you already see it but i have the uh, measurements inside of the screen so you can uh, see what uh, they measured at the start of this project then over here I chose to, let me do it like this, <laughs> my yellow, no idea, uh, Masdevelia. So we do have a Masdevelia for this project as well. And I chose to do a Zygo and I chose to do the Lewis and Dorf, who is almost done blooming. And she's doing very well, she's uh, now maturing that new growth that just bloomed. So she is in uh, this project as well. Let's get uh, over here because I also did choose a epidendrum. And I chose my oldest one, this yellow one. For me, it's more orange, but this is, a, as you can see, this is the whole plant. And she has her cake is here and the blooms on there. So that one is in there. I also included the Leodoro because it's basically the video where this all started. So I thought it would be fun to put her in as well, just to see how uh, she is doing. So that is a uh, participant. <laughs> then just a uh, regular chosen fell. This is the Surf Song. Beautiful orange blooms. She is also in this uh, project. Beautiful, nice roots. Then a Cattleya type, and I chose to do my uh, golden elf, who is currently here, because I saw some signs of scale, I believe. So I just sprayed it, as you can see. But it has nothing to do with this uh, project. But she's in, uh, in the project as well, the golden elf. A Cattleya type orchid. Then over here, Sorry for the noise, but it's a fairly warm day. This Maxillaria chrysanthemum. We did the repot not that long ago. So she is also in the, this project. Then over here, it's actually the other half of this plant. <laughs> Miltoniopsis, it's also a spotted one. Uh, I'm sorry, Miltoniopsis. Miltonia, sunset. And she is also in the project. <laughs> Fairly big plant, grows very well. 
Then over here, I chose this Dendrobium phenolopsis, the banana chocolate. It's doing very well. It has a bit of discoloration on the leaves, so that's not necessarily the problem of this project. It has a root system, new growth, so I see it selected as well. Then a nobly type over here, this beautiful primadonna. It's going to be beautiful in bloom. Some blooms are going over, but still it's beautiful. So, see, it's been chosen as well. <laughs> then over here, I'm almost there, you guys. I chose my Harvey Arnhem, who is working on a spike here, a spike here, and another spike there, and maybe a start of a spike over here. I'm not sure, but anyhow, she is also in the project. And then I have my Oncidium Sherry Baby also included very nice large big plant and she's working on new growths looking very healthy i believe so yeah i thought this is a nice one to put in as well okay so i'm uh, not sure if you noticed but the miltonia her xander we just did uh, do together on screen was the one he had that had a lowest ph it was in the five so that's a sign for me that it's uh, going almost too low um, but anyhow it was it was uh, good enough uh, so that that uh, is uh, I'm going to leave it Let, let's put it like that then the lowest was the next one was the maxillaria uh, chrysanthemum yeah that was six nine six and the rest was all in the seven so it's fairly high but that is basically uh, why I found this project to be uh, very interesting because as you can see if you do measurements and we took uh, today 15 plants uh, 14 are okay but one is on the edge of being okay so you never know what happens and therefore I'm very very interesting to see if this going to work if this project is going to work and give uh, gives us a stabilized uh, pH uh, preferably around 6.5 that's a beautiful pH so somewhere uh, let's say in between 6 and 7 that would be fantastic. That would be absolutely fantastic. And I think something is going to happen because this advice is coming from uh, two very good growers, I believe. So, uh, but you never know, of course. And that's why I chose to uh, to do these measurements and just follow uh, them for uh, for a year. Once again, it sounds very long, but it's uh, only three three videos after this one, and then we did uh, follow them a year, and we can see what happens. And of course. If there is anything from interest in between, I'm going to make a few more videos. So probably we will have a few more. Uh, uh, maybe, I'm not uh, sure of course, but, but we will uh, we'll see. Uh, but at least we will have four. And this is the longest one because we had to do the intro, the measurements, the ex uh, explanation of uh, about the fertilizers, of course. And this is just a very important video to start. So if people join in later on, they still know what we are doing here. Once again, I'm very interesting to see what happens. I hope it's going to work because it will save uh, quite some uh, some work, and, and uh, yeah, it's it's going to be easier if it works. Anyhow, um, oh yeah, one thing I did mention in the beginning of the video, I was talking about a two to one ratio. I don't know why I did it because it's not a two to one ratio. Tom, I apologize. He had to explain uh, him. <laughs> <laughs> Again, because I did it in a comment as well. I'm not sure why, but my brain uh, uh, puts it like a two to one ratio, but, but it isn't because we have 25 parts per million of rain mix and two parts of the archifit. So that's not a two to one uh, ratio, of course. I apologize. So just forget it. It's not important. The actual measurements we did today, those are important. Anyhow, uh, I think this is it for now. I hope you enjoy this project. Please let me know. And of course, if there's something that I missed or you want to add something in there for, for not only for me, but for all of the viewers to read, please uh, put it in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, in, in about three months, we'll have our first update. And I'm so curious, but anyhow, we, uh, we have to wait a little bit. For now, if you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. Maybe you want to subscribe to my channel if you didn't already have. And of course, thank you so much for watching. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.